Am I wrong for threatening to cut my son off financially over a baby name? I want to say yes, but like, I don't think you would be that unreasonable just to cut them off over a name you didn't like, unless it was like something offensive. Let's get into it. I had my son fairly young and I recently had a change of life baby. When I was four months pregnant, my son, who was in college at the time, told me that he had gotten his girlfriend pregnant. I wasn't very happy, but I've been supportive and I've given them a lot of financial assistance. I had my daughter two months ago and named her Clara. Clara? Clara? C-L-A-R-A, Clara? Clara. My son's girlfriend went ballistic. She said they were going to name their daughter Clara and that I should have consulted with them. Uh, I got pregnant first, but whatever. I told her she needs to grow up and that she doesn't own the name. My son asked me if I would consider changing Clara's name. I want to say Clara. Clara doesn't sound right. I said no and he stormed out of the house. Well, they told me the other day that they are going to name their daughter Paxton. I guess I made a face and she started yelling at me that this is my fault because I sold the only name she likes. I even asked her if she likes the name Paxton and she said she is going to like it when I have to tell my friends I have a granddaughter named Paxton. P-A-X-T-Y-N. Paxton? Patient? Am I saying this shit right? I don't know. So she pretty much said she hates me more than she loves her daughter. My son said I have two months to fix this, to change Clara's name. And I told them that they are both idiots and I feel bad for their future child. I also said if they name their daughter Paxton just to be spiteful, I will not give them any further assistance. My son called me up and said I was being controlling, but when I asked him if he actually likes the name, he hung up on me. Just to make things clear, they'd never once mentioned the name Clara to me. I think I woke up to a great alien in my room last night. I've been up since 5 a.m. and I just can't get this off my mind. So last night I'm sleeping and I'm having a nightmare that I'm in an apartment, looking into a kitchen area, and the drawers, cabinets, and a door to the pantry were all opening, closing, and moving by themselves, almost like poltergeist activity. I was scared in the dream, so I began praying, and then my wife, who was in bed next to me, kicked my foot and woke me up because I was clearly distressed and mumbling a lot in my sleep. I jumped awake because my wife kicked my foot, and feeling relieved not to be having the nightmare anymore, I turned my head towards my wife who was laying behind me and say, thank you, babe. I'm really sorry about that. I was having a nightmare, but I don't hear any response. So I figured that she's already fallen back to sleep or might just be so tired that she's still kind of out of it. Then I turned my head back to facing forwards, the direction I was facing the whole time while I was sleeping. And I noticed something in the corner of the room, standing in front of the bedroom door. The room was dark, but its skin still appeared to be like a dark matte gray color. It was really thin, had thin legs and long thin arms, a small, almost childlike torso, a narrow neck, and then a really big bulbous head with huge black almond shaped eyes. It looked exactly like a traditional gray alien, but it was slightly transparent. Needless to say, I was shocked. And to be honest, my very first reaction was that I was seeing things because I had just woken up. So I rubbed my eyes and it's still there. Trying not to panic and trying to come up with a rational explanation for it, I thought, this must just be dream chemicals still working in my brain. So I stood up slightly and looked into the corner of our bedroom by the closet, expecting to see something there too, but there's nothing. Then I look at the ceiling, nothing. The floor, nothing. The wall, nothing. I look back at the corner by the bedroom door and it's still right there, standing there completely still, just staring at me with its huge jet black eyes, which were shaped like almonds and appeared to wrap just slightly around the side of its head, not much larger than a human's eyes. And it's still slightly transparent, but I'm seeing it clearly and only in that one spot too, not anywhere else in the room. Now, because the Texas power grid sucks, I always sleep with a flashlight next to the bed. And after seeing this thing for about a minute and a half, it occurs to me to grab the flashlight. I lean off the bed, reach down and grab the flashlight and shine it in the corner of the room at this beam. And because it's transparent, it became much less visible when I shine the light on it. And I could still see it very slightly, but it was much less. Again, in disbelief at what I was seeing, I began to slowly scan the whole room with the flashlight. From the bed, of course, I wasn't going to try to get out of bed. I was way too scared to be honest. And again, I see absolutely nothing strange anywhere in the room at all, except for this thing that I can see in the corner by the bedroom door. I turn the flashlight off and instantly, I can see it super clearly again just staring at me. I rub my eyes again and squeeze my eyes together tightly, hoping that when I open them, it'd be gone. But it wasn't. So finally, I began truly freaking out internally. I just began praying out loud. And about after 20 seconds of praying, I literally watched this thing just fade out of existence and dematerialize right in front of me. It was still sitting there dead still and staring at me the whole time. It just seemed to suddenly begin becoming more increasingly transparent until it wasn't. I've been awake since then, spend the rest of the night reading random stuff here on Reddit and try to distract myself because the experience shook me up quite a bit to be honest. I was wondering if anyone else here has ever had an experience like this. I feel so genuinely weirded out that I just don't know what to make of it to be honest. Am I wrong for announcing my wife's pregnancy when my brother and sister-in-law were still grieving the death of their newborn? My 34 male wife Amanda 32 female got pregnant recently. We were yet to announce it but before we could do so we learned about the death of my nephew. 
My brother's newborn had died and he informed us about it. We went to his house to offer our condolences and they were in a really distraught state. Here's the thing, I was buying a few supplies for my wife related to her pregnancy when I got the announcement. And as I rushed to my brother's house immediately upon getting the message, we still had the purchases with us. Upon reaching there, we offered our condolences and remained present for quite a while. It seems as if my sister-in-law, Emily, was either pretending to keep her composure or looking for a topic to divert her mind. But she casually asked us what we were doing considering the purchases and what we had bought. I hesitated to answer, but she already noticed some of the stuff in the bag and asked what those were. Am I wrong for announcing my wife's pregnancy when my brother and sister-in-law were still grieving the death of their newborn? I hesitated to answer, but she already noticed some of the stuff in the bag and asked what it was. It was pretty obvious they were related to pregnancy, and although we said nothing, she seemed curious to know. So we told her that she was pregnant, and Emily began to cry when she learned what it was, while my brother began to accuse me of announcing it while they were dealing with the literal death of their child. He got into a huge verbal sparring with me, but I told him we were going to announce it anyways and I didn't want to lie, especially because she already noticed what the stuff was. Edited to add, some people are saying I argued with him, but I hadn't mentioned that he said there's no need to gloat about it. I sure as hell hope something like this doesn't happen to your child and you better pray for it to not die by crib death. And he also said other things that did result in the argument, so am I wrong? Many of the comments just say, I don't understand why you would bring those things inside, but it must have just been an accident. Every single time I get sick, I get so soft and so dramatic. And even though the doctor says I'm fine every single time, I think, but what if I am a medical anomaly? And Montana used to tell me I was one in a million and I'm not a pop star yet. So maybe I'm a sickly one in a million. And instead of just resting up as one should do, I give myself severe anxiety because I pull out my phone and I Google things like, what does botulism feel like? Can you get syphilis from a toilet seat? If a bug crawled across my toothbrush in the night and then I use that toothbrush, could I get severely ill? How much does appendix surgery cost? And Google's like, it's called an appendectomy, you fool. And now there are AI quizzes that you can take and you can tell them your symptoms and they'll narrow down what they think you have. And my AI robot told me that I either have precancer or gas. So that was helpful. And then at some point while I'm sick, I start crying over the injustice of our healthcare system. And then I start thinking things like, I don't wanna be alone anymore. I love being alone 99% of the time, but it's not worth it if there's nobody to take care of me when I'm sick and around this time my roommates text me and they say, hey, is there anything we can do for you? And I'm like, leave me alone. I'm an adult. I know how to order my own soup and popsicles using an app. And yesterday during a moment of weakness, I told my roommate I didn't want my last muffin because I was sick and now it's morning time and I don't have any muffins because they ate my last muffin while I was sick and I'm, I'm mad about it. Am I wrong for going on vacation without my husband? My husband, 32 male, and I, 29 female, planned a week vacation to New Orleans. We, but mostly I, have been planning this for months. Back in March, I told him I planned most of it, where to go, what to do, and all he had to do was make sure he had the week off and buy the plane tickets. I spent the last few months researching what to do. I booked the hotel room, made reservations at places we wanted to try, and also made a list of sites. And every few weeks, I would check in with my husband to see if he asked off and bought the ticket yet. He would say he was waiting for the ticket prices to go down, so three weeks ago, I reminded him again. That's when he said he got the time off of work but had forgotten to get the tickets. And when he looked online, the tickets were close to $1,500 per ticket, so he said he'd wait again to see if they went down. Last week, I asked if he bought them yet, and guess what he said? Of course, no. So we looked again and the prices were still high. Am I wrong for going on vacation without my husband? I asked if he bought the tickets again and he said no. We looked again and the prices were still high and he said he wasn't willing to spend that much money on them. He proceeded to ask how much money I would lose if I just canceled everything instead. He offered to have a nice staycation instead, and I told him I was not willing to cancel everything because I spent so much time planning it. So we argued and didn't come to a conclusion, and I wound up buying one ticket for myself. Then when Saturday came, I told him I was still going. He acted all surprised that I didn't want to stay home with him. 
I'm in New Orleans now and he's blowing up my phone saying I'm wrong for leaving him. He was trying to get a ticket to come too, but I told him if he came, he's getting his own hotel room. Because now this is my vacation away from him. Am I wrong? Top comment says, I don't know if he deliberately sabotaged the trip or just didn't care enough to follow through his tiny piece of things.